So um, the focus of the thematic core service is uh, related to um, low carbon energy. Uh, we are committed to significantly reducing our greenhouse gas emissions uh, up to 2020 and we're expecting further cuts to 2050. Um, a lot of um, the reduction in CO2 and other greenhouse gas emissions will be related to power generation, so that means that we will need to rely more on renewables but also bring in some of the low, car uh, low carbon alternatives like um, CCS, like shale gas, um, geothermal energy and nuclear. Geoenergy test beds are a relatively new concept in geoscience. They are subsurface or underground uh, facilities that monitor or perform experimental tests um, and they are uh, aiming to understand underground processes that will allow us to use the subsurface sustainably, to do it responsibly. If we can do that then that will underpin, underpin the management of the subsurface, it will allow us to develop regulation and ultimately that will lead us towards a new energy system in Europe. Um, well I think the, the services come down to two main elements, so um, because of the nature of this particular service um, there are the the data services, so the virtual access, but also the physical access to facilities. So for the um, uh, data services, we're looking at integrating the delivery of data and models. Um, we're looking at online publication of data. We're looking at continuous monitoring data being fed directly from the facilities um, on a continuous sort of time series basis. Uh, we're also looking at um, experimental data, so that might be a discrete package of a particular experiment. Um, those types of services we will uh, initially um, serve as uh, a web service, which will be a, a facility locator and a signposting service onto where the data is held and how people can get access to that. Um, the second uh, stream of work is the transnational access, and this is uh, related to um, researchers getting physical access to facilities. It, you need to bear in mind that these facilities and this data is very expensive to collect and technically very difficult to collect. And what we would like to try and avoid across Europe is individual countries all building the same types of facilities. Um, so if we can um, allow researchers to get access to facilities, then um, obviously we, we only need to build one particular type of facility in a particular location and everybody can come in and use that. Okay. Okay. So the big scientific challenges are what we are able to do with the subsurface and what we can do sustainably and safely. Um, so we need to understand um, what the limits are, you know, what happens if you interact with, this, uh, with the subsurface, if you make changes, what will the effect of those changes be, what the limits are on those changes, how much can we do safely, um, and what are the risks of, of, of performing those activities. Well, the big issues around geoenergy test beds is that they cover all energy domains, so we're covering um, uh, carbon capture and storage, so gas storage, we're looking at geothermal, we're looking at the deep mining, we're looking at deep geology, um, and although it's quite a different, um, uh, very different types of um, facilities and very different types of issues, basically they're multidisciplinary as well, so they all have sort of geological aspects, geophysical aspects, geochemistry aspects and geomechanics aspects that we need to take into account. But the biggest uh, gain will be a common understanding of subsurface processes, it is about the process understanding. Um, we should be able to improve our fundamental understanding of geolo uh, geology and geological processes and of course we will have access to data which will help us all move that knowledge and understanding further together so it's, it's um, building on individual strands of evidence to create a better understanding of the subsurface environment. From seismology we can draw on uh, natural and induced seismology from our activities, from the geological uh, thematic core service that will tell us about the geological units, it will tell us about um, how we can uh, create static models of the geology, we can create dynamic models of the geology, we can look at the uh, near fault observatories, um, looking at stress and strain and how faults develop, we can look at uh, satellite data um, and you know, look at ground deformation, um, even the volcanology, you know. I think it's about integrating um, researchers from very different disciplines who've traditionally operated in, uh, in, their own, in, in their own areas, sort of a little bit siloed, and it's about bringing all of that together to uh, move our understanding of subsurface processes forward. Um, 
huge challenge just by virtue of the scale, the number of people involved. I mean, it, it, it's brilliant. It's also a very different way of thinking um, for researchers. Researchers think in terms of um, grants and, and doing the work. Obviously, EPOS is a research infrastructure and it's about providing the facilities and the framework within, that work, within which um, the work can take place. So